The two found themselves caught up in a gender pay gap scandal after it was revealed by producers that Smith earned more money than Foy. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 Netflix scandals. A report from Netflix saying it's lost subscribers for the first time in a decade, 200,000 so far this year. For this list, we'll be looking at the biggest controversies that this streaming giant has stirred up over the years. Did any of these make you question your loyalty to the platform? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Crackdown on Password Sharing Ever since Netflix went into film and TV production, the streaming giant has done its best to increase subscribers and maximize profits. This has seen them raise subscription prices multiple times, much to the dismay of many customers. You know, you look at the price of it right now, I mean, a top, a top level subscription for Netflix is $19.99. In the same vein, Netflix announced in late 2022 that they'll be putting in place measures to discourage password sharing. Streaming giant Netflix just revealing its crackdown on password sharing is imminent and could press pause on an estimated 100 plus million viewers who are tuning in without paying up. How, you ask? Well, by linking accounts with a primary location and preventing people who don't live there from accessing them or at least charging them an additional fee to share it. Where viewers outside of the primary household had to create a sub-account to tune in for an additional 2 to $3 a month. The announcement caused an uproar on social media, with many threatening to cancel their subscriptions and pointing out Netflix's previous ironic statements. Number 19. The Goop Lab Founded by Hollywood actress Gwyneth Paltrow, the wellness and lifestyle company Goop has been at the center of controversy multiple times. And now it's this modern lifestyle brand. The company has been largely criticized for marketing products and treatments that many experts consider to be pseudoscientific and potentially harmful. In 2020, Netflix premiered The Goop Lab, a six-part documentary series that further explores the organization's controversial ideas and practices. It was really hard. I had four <laughs> panic attacks without you. Oh. Although each episode began with a disclaimer stating that it was only meant to entertain and inform, many still accused them of spreading misinformation. Despite the backlash, Netflix refused to take the series off its platform, even going further to renew it for a second season. This looks like classic goop, some fine information presented alongside unscientific, unproven, potentially harmful therapies for attention. Number 18. Monique Calls for a Boycott In 2018, Oscar-winning actress Monique rallied her fans to boycott Netflix, alleging that the company had discriminated against her. Monique claimed that the streaming giant had offered her $500,000 for a one-hour comedy special, while paying others who weren't black women significantly higher. Inequality is devastating, and it's extreme. These claims were echoed by fellow comedian Wanda Sykes, who stated that she was paid even less than Monique for her special. Monique filed a lawsuit against Netflix, claiming that they had violated anti-discrimination laws and attempted to retaliate against her for speaking up. I've got to speak up and speak out. And I've got to say boycott this because it's blatantly unfair. However, both parties seemed to have ironed out their differences, as the case was settled out of court and Monique released a comedy special on the streamer in April 2023. Why did I title this special, My Name is Monique? I give y'all my word after 72 minutes, y'all gonna know why. Number 17. The Crown Equal Pay Dispute The gender pay disparity has proven to be a serious problem in virtually all industry sectors. Producers of the Netflix series The Crown came under fire when it was revealed in 2018 that Claire Foy was paid less per episode than Matt Smith. Claire Foy, who plays young Queen Elizabeth, was paid less than her co-star during the first two seasons, despite winning a Golden Globe Award for her portrayal of the British monarch. Foy had portrayed Queen Elizabeth II, the main subject of the show, while Smith starred as her husband, Prince Philip. The streamer initially defended its decision, chalking it up to Smith's already established presence from his time on Doctor Who. I know that Matt feels the same that I do, that it's odd to find yourself at the center of a story that you didn't particularly ask for. But with increasing backlash, they eventually issued an apology and promised to do better going forward. However, as Foy's tenure in the role had already ended, the apology was deemed by many to be a little too late. There is no possibility of my forgiving you. The question is, 
How on earth can you forgive yourself? Number 16. Quickster We all know the origin story of Netflix, starting as a DVD by the mail service that eventually put their biggest competition blockbuster out of business. Go to Netflix.com, make a list of the movies you want to see, and in about one business day, you'll get three DVDs. Keep them as long as you want, without late fees. As the years progressed, the company sought to make more profits from their streaming and DVD rental services. Hence, they increased subscription prices in 2011. But when that decision was met with an overwhelmingly negative reception, Netflix decided to launch Quickster to handle the rentals, with an additional charge. See, now I feel badly because I'm a current Netflix subscriber who's going to, I guess, eventually just be a Quickster subscriber. They quickly learned how big of a mistake this was. The company reportedly lost about a million subscribers and saw its stock value plummet in the aftermath. Just three weeks after launching the plan, Quickster was axed, although Netflix retained the price hike. A Netflix spokesman says the company underestimated the appeal of a single website and single service, and it's scrapping the Quickster deal. Number 15. Autistic Portrayal in Atypical The Netflix show Atypical revolves around Sam Gardner, a young man on the autism spectrum trying to handle relationships and his family. I don't care what happens to my dead brain. I mean, it's either I give it to Julia or maggots eat it. If mom wants maggots to eat it, that's fine. After the premiere of its first season, the series was praised by some for its representation of the condition. However, it faced criticism from many in the autistic community. One major point of contention was that the show seemingly presented a stereotypical view of autism, with the main character being portrayed more as a caricature than a real person. What'd you do? I just smiled at her like this. Detractors also highlighted the glaring lack of autistic actors, writers, and crew members. Things seemed to get better with subsequent seasons, as the series hired more autistic individuals to achieve a well-rounded representation. I know, and it was a classic moral quandary. Number 14. Porta dos Fundos and their depictions of Jesus The Brazilian comedy troupe Porta dos Fundos are well known for poking fun at religion, sexuality, and politics. The group has released two Netflix specials, The Last Hangover and The First Temptation of Christ. Both films centered around Jesus Christ, with the former satirizing The Last Supper and the latter fictionalizing his return home after being tempted in the desert. Although critically acclaimed, The Last Hangover was decried by many, particularly in Singapore, where Netflix was forced to remove it from their platform. The first Temptation of Christ caused a much larger uproar, with more than 2 million people signing a petition to have it taken off. It also resulted in Porta dos Fundos' headquarters getting destroyed by a religious extremist group. Number 13. Danny Masterson Controversy In the wake of the Me Too movement, multiple Netflix stars became embroiled in misconduct and assault allegations, most notably Kevin Spacey. But more on that later. Due to the magnitude of the Spacey scandal, it nearly overshadowed that of actor Danny Masterson. Masterson had risen to prominence on that 70s show, and in his adulthood, he became known for his role on the Netflix show The Ranch. Hey, I got 10 bucks. Anyone in here knows how old I am. <laughs> Beginning in 2017, multiple women accused Masterson of harassment and or assault, with some incidents dating back to the early 2000s. As a result, he was fired from the ranch by Netflix. They have fired Masterson from the ranch. Masterson faced criminal charges in relation to the incidents, and in November 2022, his first court case ended in a mistrial. Not clear yet if the DA's office will retry Masterson. Number 12. Partnership with Leo Tsuxing In September 2020, Netflix announced that it had partnered with Chinese science fiction writer Liu Tsuxing. This partnership would bring an English-language series adaptation of his Three Body trilogy to the streamer. The works are considered highly influential in China, and the adaptation was sure to be a hit for Netflix. However, the announcement generated controversy in the U.S. due to Tzu Qing's support of the Chinese government's treatment of Uyghur Muslims in Xinjiang. Five American senators wrote a letter to Netflix condemning their decision to work with Tzu Qing. 
In response, Netflix defended the partnership, stating their disagreement with the author's opinions, which they claimed would not influence the show in any way. Number 11. Basically everything about Insatiable Right from the moment its first trailer dropped, the Netflix comedy series Insatiable spurred a negative reaction. My name is Patty. <laughs> High school was a nightmare. The show starred the actress Debbie Ryan as Patty Bladell, a high school girl who transforms her physical appearance after being taunted by her classmates. It smells like bacon. <laughs> Just ignore them. Many first took offense with Ryan donning a bodysuit for the role, with over 100,000 calling for the show's cancellation through an online petition before it even premiered. More than 115,000 people have signed an online petition urging Netflix to cancel the series. Once it was released, the backlash only grew, with detractors accusing the show of fat shaming and promoting harmful stereotypes about body image. Despite all of this, and the negative critical reviews it garnered, Insatiable was renewed for a second season, which ultimately became its last. Nothing can change who I am or what I've done. Number 10. The Fox Lawsuit Numerous talents have jumped ship from other media giants to produce content for Netflix, causing plenty of friction in the industry. A year before entering negotiations with Disney about an acquisition, 20th Century Fox filed a lawsuit against Netflix. The Court of Infernal Affairs is now in session. Fox accused Netflix of illegally poaching two of their top executives under contract, Marco Waltenberg and Tara Flynn. You have no right. You are to stop this instant. Is that clear? Nah. A month later, Netflix fired back with a countersuit, accusing Fox of creating unlawful barriers. In 2019, Judge Mark Gross ruled in Fox's favor, preventing Netflix from soliciting employees with fixed-term employment agreements. Netflix subsequently appealed, only to lose in December 2021. But I ask you, what is a contract? Webster's defines it as an agreement under the law which is unbreakable. Fox isn't the only brand that Netflix has clashed with, as Viacom also sued the streaming service for enlisting Momita Sengupta, who had been under contract. Contracts are like hearts. They're made to be broken. Number 9. Bill Cosby, No Laughing Matter in August 2014, Netflix announced that they would distribute Bill Cosby 77, a stand-up film commemorating the comedian's 77th birthday. A month before the film was set to release, comedian Hannibal Burris delivered a stand-up routine highlighting the assault allegations against Cosby. As Burris's routine went viral, more women came forward with similar allegations regarding the once-renowned comedian. Netflix put the film on hold mere hours after Janice Dickinson recounted her history with Cosby. By July 2015, Netflix's chief content officer, Ted Sarandos, announced that Bill Cosby 77 was no longer coming to Netflix. Cosby would be found guilty three years later, spending another three years in prison. While Cosby has been released, don't expect to see the film on Netflix anytime soon. Number 8. Oscar Eligibility for the longest time, it was easy to differentiate theatrical movies from TV movies. I'm gonna be homeless. A homeless cop. It's like a made-for-TV movie that I will not be able to watch because I won't have a television because I'll be homeless. With the rise of streaming, that line has been blurred. Since Netflix has distributed numerous high-profile films, many have debated whether they should be eligible at the Oscars. You're no messiah, you're a, you're a movie of the week. To qualify for Academy Award consideration, a film must play in LA for a minimum of seven consecutive days with three daily showings. For the Oscar hopeful Roma, Netflix released the film theatrically for three weeks before making it available at home. Despite meeting the requirements, industry leaders like Steven Spielberg argued that streaming releases belong at the Emmys. Once you commit to a television format, you're a TV movie. You, you, you certainly if, if it's a good show, deserve an Emmy, but not an Oscar. Of course, with the COVID-19 pandemic just around the corner, streaming suddenly went from a luxury to a necessity in the cinematic experience. Number 7. Disney Removes Content Netflix and Disney, a beautiful partnership that was not built to last. Excuse me, the story you're about to tell is the copyrighted property of the Walt Disney Corporation. In late 2012, The Mouse House entered an exclusive streaming deal with Netflix. Classic Disney films were quickly made available on Netflix. 
Starting in 2016, newer Disney releases would be added too. The two companies also collaborated on original Marvel shows like Daredevil and Jessica Jones. In 2017, though, Disney announced that they would be moving away from Netflix to launch their own streaming service. On November 12, 2019, Disney Plus officially hit the scene and the streaming wars became infinitely more competitive. Disney's presence on Netflix is now virtually non-existent. This extends to the live-action Marvel shows, which moved to Disney Plus in March 2022. And don't get us wrong, we're still gonna bill you. Number 6. Dave Chappelle's Closer Comments In 2016, comedian Dave Chappelle entered a multi-million dollar deal with Netflix to distribute six of his specials. His final Netflix special, appropriately titled The Closer, proved divisive, with the main criticism concerning Chappelle's jokes regarding the transgender community. In addition to receiving backlash from GLAAD, the National Black Justice Coalition, called for the special to be pulled. Ted Sarando stood by the special even as a few Netflix employees staged a walkout. B. Pagels Minor, a transgender Netflix employee who helped organize the walkout, would be fired for leaking confidential information about the company. Chappelle's rep announced that he'd be holding off on transgender jokes, quote, until we can all laugh together. However, the rep noted that, quote, Dave stands by his art. Number 5. Cuties Controversy The title sounds innocent enough, but Cuties may be the most controversial film to ever hit the Netflix library. Premiering at Sundance in 2020, this award-winning French film centers on an 11-year-old Muslim girl who joins a twerking group. Cuties gained more attention when Netflix picked it up and released a poster that many argued sexualized young girls. While Netflix switched out posters, the company moved forward with distributing Cuties. As Cancel Netflix started trending on Twitter, the film was met with widespread review bombing. The reviews from critics were much more positive, praising the film's commentary on youth and internet culture. Our girls see that the more a woman is overly sexualized on social media, the more she is successful, and the children just imitate what they see. However, the subject matter alone was enough to attract criticism from politicians like Ted Cruz, who called for a criminal investigation. Number 4. Netflix Animation Have no fear! Kid Cosmic is here! With shows like Kid Cosmic, Maya and the Three, and The Cuphead Show, Netflix seemed like a limitless playground for animation. Amid skyrocketing subscription losses, though, Netflix announced in April 2022 that several highly anticipated animated projects would be axed. This included adaptations of Jeff Smith's Bone and Roald Dahl's The Twits, as well as Lauren Faust's Toil and Trouble. Phil Rinda, who oversaw the original animation at Netflix, was let go along with some of his staff members. Many other creative talents have also departed from Netflix animation to pursue work elsewhere. Moving forward, it appears we're inclined to see fewer ambitious animated shows from Netflix. But don't worry, Netflix is eager to dish out more data-friendly shows like The Boss Baby back in business. Ugh. Oh, thank God for that. Number 3. A House of Cards Collapses There are 52 cards in a standard deck, so it probably would have made sense creatively to wrap up House of Cards with 52 episodes and 4 seasons. It also could have saved Netflix from a PR nightmare. In October 2017, only five months after the fifth season released, star Kevin Spacey faced misconduct allegations. They described the set of House of Cards as a toxic environment for young men who had to interact with Spacey in any capacity. Anthony Rapp notably accused Spacey of making unwanted advances towards him when he was young. Spacey was subsequently fired from the show, which moved forward with its sixth and final season. A new president would be filling the Oval Office, however. While House of Cards was once Netflix's flagship drama, many feel it's been forever tainted by the Spacey controversy. Spacey's annual Christmas videos as Frank Underwood have not helped. I hope that uh, everyone who's dealing with these sorts of situations does feel the courage to uh, come forward. Number 2. 13 Reasons Why This Needed a Disclaimer Based on an equally controversial book, the first season of this Netflix series centers on teenager Hannah Baker and why she ends her life. I'm not sure what I'm expecting. All right. Well, it sounds like there's something that you need that you're not getting. 
This wasn't the only serious issue that 13 Reasons Why tackled, but it arguably sparked the most debate. The graphic scene where Hannah commits her final act was especially divisive, with some calling it glamorized. It's hard to say if the show had any real-world implications, although the number of young people taking their lives reportedly increased following its release. Going forward, warning cards became a staple of the show. Actually, most shows that deal with self-harm and mental health now have similar disclaimers. Netflix would also edit Hannah's infamous death scene in 2019, two years after the episode came out. You made the decision as parents, it's too much, but for so many kids, they may not have parents to talk to, they don't talk about it, and the reality is it affects everyone. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Losing 200,000 Subscribers Whoa! Netflix has so much money? Netflix has established itself as a major player in entertainment, forever changing the game. Even giants can stumble, however. In April 2022, it was reported that Netflix had lost 200,000 subscribers in the year's first quarter, its largest drop in nearly 10 years. But it was even worse than what anyone was expecting. There are several possible reasons why. Raised prices, the increase of streaming competitors, the loss of licensed shows like The Office and Friends, and the declining quality of some original content. With its stock plummeting, Netflix is expected to only lose more customers. Well, this is gonna hurt like a mother Granted, Netflix currently has over 200 million subscribers. Remember though, it was once hard to imagine a world without Blockbuster. Will Netflix bounce back or will we be watching a documentary about the last Netflix subscriber one day? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.